the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week as we get into the Word of God. And I tell you what, I am excited about what God is doing in these days. Praise God. And you should be, too. I tell you, there's some super stuff going on, not the least of which is Word of Faith Radio. WFR.org, Word of Faith Radio, as it says right here on the lower part of the screen. Go to that website. We now have a new player on the website so that you can uh, listen as soon as you hit the page it starts up and you can hear what's happening on word of faith radio right at that moment and uh, really appreciate that and also dr larry hutton has started on word of faith radio and dr larry hutton is one of my favorite teachers particularly a teaching that i heard him do at our church faith and victory church uh it's been several years ago now but he taught on tithing and i'm telling you what he nailed the teaching concerning tithing. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that there's no way around it. He demonstrated that tithing is a New Testament doctrine. He demonstrated that tithing is for us today. He demonstrated that tithing is of benefit to you as a believer and that if you will tithe, God will bless your finances and just bless your socks right off, praise God. Get your new socks while you're at it. (laughs) Amen. So, awesome teaching by Dr. Hutton on that. So, I encourage you to listen to his radio program. It comes on Saturdays, and uh, I'm not sure right where in the time slot it fits, but you can go on the website, wfr.org, click on the schedule button, and it will list out the schedule for Word of Faith Radio. And Brother Harold keeps that schedule up to date, so uh, you can count on that being accurate for when different programs air. Now, our program, the Word of Faith broadcast, airs Monday through Friday. That's regular weekdays, Monday through Friday, every morning at 11.30. Now, that's 11.30 Eastern time. So whatever time zone you're in, just adjust that, and it'll, it'll be right for your time zone then. But 11.30 Eastern, we follow Brother Kenneth Copeland's program, which comes on at 11. And I'm telling you what, whoo. We've been getting in some good things. We're going to talk more about that here in just a few minutes. The other thing is, is this program that you are watching on video right now on our website, which, by the way, it is now on speakfaith.tv, is the website for the video netcast. If you go to our regular website, and I'm going to put that URL right here, speakfaith.tv. If you go to our regular website, which is wfm.org, and you click on Netcast, you will notice it will t- it takes you to speakfaith.tv. We took the speakfaith.tv project and just kind of, you might say, morphed it <laughs> into uh, a very unique website application. And that application that, that was designed, actually I came up with the design for it and then our uh, our awesome programmer, PHP programmer, uh, Henry Ratliff, uh, basically took that and wrote the code to make it work. And that is called the Media Lister Project. And I'm going to put up another URL here, medialister.org. If you have a video program, netcast, maybe your church has a cable TV program, if you'll convert that to Flash, which is a .flv file, you can use the Media Lister software to have on-demand video right on your website, just like we're doing with Speak Faith TV. So I encourage you to check that out. That is free, 100% free, open source software that we make available uh, through, Bill, uh, well, let me back up a step here. I have, um, it's not exactly an organization. It used to be a business. It used to be a for-profit business. I don't do it as a business anymore. But it was called drbillbailey.net. D-R-B-I-L-L-B-A-I-L-E-Y.net. We'll put it right there on the screen. That was a business where I did consulting. And uh, I'm now full-time at High Point Regional Health System. 
as a system administrator, so I'm not doing that anymore. However, I've taken that website and kind of morphed it into our uh, base station, <laughs> if you will, for all the different video netcasts and audio netcast that I'm involved in, and I'm involved in quite a few. So that is kind of the, the jumping off place for all the different netcasts that I'm involved with. And uh, that organization or entity is what's behind Media Lister. So I just wanted to mention that. And uh, I just stay busy. I got a lot going on all the time. <laughs> all righty. Uh, let's get into the word today. We're talking about, I want to talk about something today that is taken from our uh, regular daily radio program. Over the last few days on the radio program, I've been teaching on God's commandments are not grievous. And I want to pick up on that teaching. If you haven't heard the radio programs, I'd encourage you to go to WFM.org, click on the Listen to Our Broadcast, and listen to those radio programs. We're not going to go into every single detail that we covered in the radio program, but I want to pick up on that thought and go a little further here on the video netcast. So, 1 John 5, 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat, meaning the Father God, loveth him also that is begotten of him, meaning Jesus. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Now, on the radio program, I was saying a lot of people hear, hear the word commandments, and they immediately go, oh, no, commandments. Oh, that's so hard to keep the commandments. No, it's not. No, it's not. I can tell you it's not. You say, well, yeah, it is hard to keep the commandments. No, it's not. If you keep reading. So let's keep reading. By this we know uh, that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God. This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now, see, this is the part people get into. They think that the commandments of God are hard to do, hard to bear, that they're grievous. The word here, baose, baose means weighty, burdensome, and grave can also be translated grievous, heavy, and weightier. Heaviness, burdensomeness, graveness. All of these are negative sounding things, right? His commandments are not heavy, weighty, burdensome, and grave. Now see, a lot of people look at the commandments of God and think, well, they are burdensome and grave because they chafe my style, you know? Well, then your style is not in line with the Word of God, so you need to get your style straightened out. <laughs> Amen? All right. What we're saying here is it's not hard to do the will of God. It's not hard to do the commandments of God. God has designed his commandments to be blessings. Matter of fact, let's look at that word commandment. It is entole in the Greek. It's transliterated E-N-T-O-L-E, E-N-T-O-L-E, -E, with a little accent mark over the top, and it's pronounced entele. It means injunction that is an authoritative prescription. I like that part of the definition. An authoritative description. A prescription, I'm sorry. Prescription. Now, why is that so insightful to think about it being a prescription? Because when you have some kind of sickness or disease, some kind of condition, some kind of symptom, you go to the doctor, the doctor runs some tests, he looks at the results of the test, or tests, perhaps, and what does he do? He diagnoses a problem. I want you to think about this. He diagnoses a problem, and then he prescribes some kind of medicine to resolve that problem. Now think about that with me. You have a problem, an issue, something going on in your life. Let's put it in that term. You go to the ultimate authority, that's God and His Word. He gives you a prescription to solve your problem. And that prescription is called a commandment. These are not God's suggestions. These are God's commandments. And they are not grievous. 
They're not hard to do. They're not burdensome. Now you say, but Dr. Bill, they are. No, they're not. You say, how can you say that? <laughs> I can say that on the authority of the Word of God. It says His commandments are not grievous. I don't care what you think about it. I don't care what I think about it. The Word of God says the commandments of God are not grievous. And I'm not going to argue with God, and I'm not going to argue with His Word. You see what I'm saying? Now, the truth of the matter is, hair keeps falling in my face. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that if you have a problem with the commandment being grievous, the problem's not with the commandment. The problem's with you. That's a sailor moment. You see what I'm saying? Stop and think about that. If you got a problem with a commandment from God's Word, the problem's not with God's Word. The problem is with you. And see, that's the problem with a lot of this, what I call greasy grace teaching, that's, that's become so popular these days. I tell you, that stuff... <sighs> Let me just be straight with you as a teacher of the Word of God. That stuff is an abomination to God and to His Word. It is absolutely wrong, false. And so I'd encourage you to realize that the Word of God is true. The commandments of God are true. And you need to do His commandments. You don't, get, you don't get off by just saying, well, you know, I'm covered by grace. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to obey. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to go to church. That is a one-way ticket to failure because those who overcome the world are the ones who do his commandments. Let's keep reading. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith is the world overcoming portion, part. That's what's going to overcome the world. Not your grace, not your love, your faith. All right, let's look at that scripture again. Because I don't want you to miss what it's saying here. Who is he? All right, let me back up. Whatsoever, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, who is a whatsoever that overcometh the world? That's you. You're the one that has faith. You're the one that's believing the word of God. You're the one that's acting on the commandments of God and doing the commandments of God and therefore are successful. So you are a whosoever. Or in this case, a whatsoever. If there's a whatsoever that can believe God, that whosoever or whatsoever is successful. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's read on here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, I wanted to make that point that it's not our grace, it's not our love, it's not our compassion, whatever. That's no, nothing against compassion, nothing against love. We ought to be walking in love, operating in love. Nothing against grace, because grace is the unmerited favor that God has shown us by even giving us the gift of faith. But it says that what overcomes the world is faith. Faith, we know, operates a specific way. It operates by the words of our mouth. Faith works because we put it to work. Faith doesn't work when it's not put to work. Jesus likened faith to a servant. He said, if you have a servant, would you say, don't go out into the field and harvest and then prepare my meal. Just stay in and relax and take it easy. No, he said, no, you put your servant to work. You put him out in the field. You have him harvest what he needs to harvest. You have him prepare food for you because he's your servant. Well, it's the same way with faith. You keep your faith active. You keep exercising your faith. You keep using your faith. And if you hang your faith up and say, I don't believe in that word of faith doctrine anymore. I'm, I'm a grace guy, and so I just don't have to do anything. I can stay at home, not go to church. I can forget tithing. I can forget everything. I can just do what I want to do. I can go fishing on Sundays. I can just enjoy life because I'm a grace person. Well, 
I'm a grace person, but I'm a biblical grace person. I understand that grace is not an excuse to do nothing. Grace is a wonderful grant of God toward us to favor us with the ability to do His commandments, to operate on the Word of God, to exercise our faith, and therefore to overcome the world. The only way you're going to overcome the world system, listen closely, the only way you're going to overcome the world system is by your faith and by doing and obeying the commandments of God. Because His commandments are not grievous. They are prescriptions for your success in this world. We overcome the world. We overcome the challenges of the world by our faith. That's just the way it is. And we saw that directly from the scripture here. Now let's move to verse 5. That's where I was trying to head. Verse 5. Who is he that overcomes the world? Are you one of those world overcomers? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. This is he that came by water and blood, and Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word. Remember, Jesus was the Word made flesh, so that would be the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, those of you who don't believe in the Trinity, right there it is. These three are one. Let's look at it again. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father God, the Word, Jesus is the Word made flesh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14 there, and then the Holy Ghost. These three are one. I tell you, these folks, <laughs> bad doctrine just floors me. People that deny the reality and existence of the Trinity when it plainly states it in the Word of God. I just, I don't get it. Other than devils. Just devils. There's a lot of doctrine out there that's messing with the minds of the body of Christ. You say, messing with your minds? Yeah, you know what? You've got to renew your mind to the Word of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We have to renew our minds to the Word of God. Now, if you don't renew your mind to the Word of God and instead renew it to a weird doctrine, what are you going to end up with? You're going to end up with a messed up mind. That's what I'm talking about. And what do I mean by messed up mind? A mind that is not in line with the Word of God, a mind that is not acquiescing to God's will and His Word and doing His commandments. You're going to be flaky. I don't want people that listen to this netcast to be flaky. <laughs> You know what granola Christians are, do you? My pastor talks about this, granola Christians. Fruits, nuts, and flakes all mixed together into one thing. Granola. Granola Christians, fruits, nuts, and flakes. You don't want to be one of those. You want to be a believer that is solid on the Word. You want to be solid as a rock. Jesus said to Peter... Upon this rock I'll build my church. Now, he wasn't talking about Peter being a rock. See, Peter, the name Peter, means a piece of rock. But a big, massive rock, different word was used there, Petra, instead of Petrus. Petra, this is a Greek word, means a large, massive rock. And what was that rock? The rock of revelation knowledge. That's what he was commending Peter for. God has revealed to you that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. You didn't get that from man. You got that from God. That revelation knowledge is the rock upon which he builds the church. Now, the rock of revelation knowledge is not weird. It's not flaky. It's not false doctrine. It's rock, solid, Bible fact. Now, you've got to get to the point that you accept the word of God as rock, solid, fact. When you do, it will transform your life. You'll begin to do what it says to do. And if you do what the Bible says to do, you will succeed. You will not fail. You will overcome the world. You will not be overcome by the world. 
That is, I have Bible right there on that. We just read it. Amen? You've got to know that God wants you to succeed. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. He wants you to be a world overcomer in Christ Jesus. But in order to be a world overcomer in Christ Jesus, you're going to have to stay in Him, on His Word, rock solid. And God's commandments are not grievous. Amen? I realize it's been a kind of a short netcast, but it's been an important one. I want you to listen to our regular radio program as we continue with this topic. I just want to hit the high spots today on the video netcast, but listen to the radio program as we get into this even deeper as we go on. Amen? All right, you can write us here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. You can also write me at my email address, which is Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. And I've got it here on the bottom of the screen for you. Write me and let me know how these netcasts are ministering to you. I do want to hear from you. I just believe that we need more than ever to hear the truth of the Word of God and be solid on it. Rock solid on it. I like that. Praise God. Now, go to our website, wfm.org. Articles, teaching, audio messages, video messages. We've just got a lot of stuff there that we want to share with you. And, of course, also go to Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org. Check out the new player where you can listen to the, the station. And, of course, we've still got the little widget there. You can click on and see what's playing. Just lots of good things coming from Word of Faith Radio. More people coming on, more ministries that will be ministering over Word of Faith Radio. I encourage you to check it out. And remember, until next time, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.